The Rocket League meta is becoming more and more mechanical every day. The fact is, the bar for where your mechanics need to be at really every rank is higher now than it's ever been. So today, I'm going to be going over the daily training routine I used to take my car control from zero to hero. So stay tuned if you're currently feeling lost with what to train. Also, this is normally the part of the video where I'd ask you to consider subbing, but instead we are giving away a ton of Fenix over on the TikTok. So make sure you stay till the end of the video for more details on that. Anyways, let's break down the step-by-step -step of how to level up your car control in Rocket League. All right, guys, so the way that my training routine works is it is a seven step process that is designed to take up a full 90 minutes. So we're gonna jump into step one in just a second here, but just so you know how this is set up, right? It's supposed to take 90 minutes. However, if you're getting on someday and you know you don't have a full 90 minutes to run through the routine, feel free to scale it down based on how much time you have. But okay, let's hop into it. Let's start with drill number one, and that is, of course, Lathomir's Rings. Now, there's a reason, guys, that the thumbnail on this workshop map says the number one way to improve in Rocket League because it's true. There is nothing that compares to Lathomir's Rings. Now, sorry, guys, if you're watching and you're currently on console, I wish there was a fix to getting rings on console, but if you're on PC or Epic Games, I highly recommend that if you aren't already, start training less rings. Doesn't matter what rank you are, unless you're already GC or SSL, there's almost always going to be something for you to learn inside Lethemir's rings. So drill number one is going to be training rings for around 20 minutes, regardless of your rank. Now, if you can complete Lethemir's rings in say 14 or 15 minutes, then what you can do is start incorporating air roll. Or if this drill takes you too long, just cut it at 20 minutes and stop there. Now, if you're looking for specific things to do inside rings, I would highly recommend you check out my air roll tutorials, but something I didn't mention there, I just found out about this through somebody I was coaching in my coaching coaching program, but you can head into the settings here and actually turn down the game speed that you run at. So if you're new to rings and you're having a little bit of trouble, this is a great place to start to make it a little easier and to give your brain more time to process what's going on. My only warning is don't adjust the speed for the entire session or you're going to play tricks with yourself when you actually end up switching everything back to normal speed. But at the end of the day, guys, number one drill to kick it off. Every time you get on, you got to start with 20 minutes of Lethemir's rings. All right, moving on to drill number two, we have five minutes of aim training by Coco. Now, if you don't know what this map is, but the best way to explain it, in my opinion, is it's just a shooting gallery. Now, the reason this map is so good is because it trains shooting consistency and power, which is one of the things I see players struggle with the most across the ranks, and that holds true all the way up to Grand Champ. I also really like this map because even if the shooting part is easy for you, even if you're getting good at the shooting consistency piece, what you can actually do is check some of these mutators or modifiers in the lobby and use the shooting range to train other mechanics like bounce dribbles, catches, and a ton of other things you see here. So regardless of rank, aim training by Coco for five minutes, that is going to be step two of the training routine. Moving on to step three, we're going to shift away from workshop maps and try to get caught up to in-game speed. So drill number three is going to be five minutes of what I like to call the hot potato drill. Now, if you don't know what this drill is, that makes sense because I kind of pulled it out of nowhere, but basically what the hot potato drill is, is it's just a drill to train bounce dribbling and carries. One of the things I see players struggle a lot with at the lower ranks is controlling the ball when moving it side to side. So I created the hot potato drill, which is a drill designed to practice chipping the ball left and right to hopefully give you better ground control of your car and to get more comfortable using power slide. 
In short, to do this drill, all you want to do is start chipping the ball up. You can either use the right D-pad uh, if you have Bacchus mod or just chip it off from the kickoff spawn if not. And your goal is to keep the ball bouncing without letting it hit the ground more than two times, hence the name Hot Potato. And don't be fooled, this drill is much harder than it looks, but it's great for training that ground car control, the quick cuts, and surprisingly, it's something that I found a lot of players lack. So practice this hot potato drill, bouncing the ball around, catching it, transitioning into power shots or hook shots, and trust me, you're gonna notice an improvement in your games. All right, moving on to phase four of the training routine, we have five minutes of recovery training. The truth is, guys, no matter what your rank is, there's probably something you can work on when it comes to recoveries. So based on your rank, this drill is going to look different, but five minutes of training recoveries is absolutely critical for improving your play in game. So if you're lower rank, what you can do for these five minutes is just focus on training the fundamental recoveries if you're not comfortable with them yet, uh, like half flips, uh, wave dashes, power side recoveries, things like that. But as you get better, you can ramp up the speed. If you're higher ranked, you can start incorporating the ball and just focus on hitting the ball off the wall, carrying it around the field and recovering. If you want, you can also experiment with some recovery training packs. I'll go ahead and link my favorite aerial recovery training pack that I found in the description below. Or if you're noticing just driving around the field and focusing on recoveries is too easy for you, you can start incorporating Bacchus Mod Random Recovery Plugin. Basically what this plugin does is it just throws your car around with different intensities it, at different angles at different times to get you used to recovering in awkward situations. So regardless of what the actual training looks like, whether you're lower ranked or higher ranked, five minutes of recovery training is going to be critical for improving your car control. Finally, we're gonna hit step five, which is the last phase before you actually queue online games. And you've probably seen a lot of pros do this, but the last step is going to be minimum five minutes of speed training. Now you might be wondering, since we just did recovery training, what is speed training? All speed training really means is going around in free play with unlimited boost, trying to play at 110% of the speed you would in game. So all this means is you're going to be in free play, hitting the ball around as fast as you can, knocking it off the wall, doing self passes, following it up. But the point of the drill is to be jumping for the ball, to be leaving the ground, to be predicting the ball quicker than you would normally in game. Basically just working on improving the speed of your reads and recognition and essentially catching you up to game speed before you hop in game. So once again, what this actually looks like is going to vary based on your rank, but point is you're trying to bring everything together with the recoveries, with the quick cuts, with the consistency, with the aerial control, right? Bring all of it together and try to execute these things you've been training as quickly as possible. Trust me, there is a reason you're gonna see tons of pros doing this exact thing before they hop in online games. So don't skip out on this drill, guys. Speed training for minimum five minutes, or if it takes you longer to get warmed up, longer is fine, but at least five minutes before you queue online games. All right, moving on to step six of the training routine. This might seem like a silly step, but I'm actually including it. Step six is going to be queuing online games. Now, the reason I'm actually including this as part of the training routine is because it's very important you queue online games before you go into step seven. And I'll get to what I mean by that in just a second, but my recommendation is you do all these things, then queue online games, and then we're gonna come back to one last piece of the training in just a second here. Another question I often get asked is, should I queue casual before I queue ranked? And because we just did speed training, I think queuing casual actually does more harm than good. Because if you just train speed training, queuing casual can often lower your speed of play, which is not ideal if you're gonna move into ranked. But overall, the details are less important than the structure. So big picture, two games, six, and then move on to the final step of the training routine, step seven. All right, we're on the step that I've been hinting at throughout the video. What is step 
7. Just like with the other tips, the name isn't quite as important here, but step 7 is what I call stretch training. Now when I say stretch training, what I mean to say is this is training that is meant to hit on mechanics you don't yet know. And to understand why we have to do this, you have to think back on the training routine up until this point. The first five drills that we talked about in anticipation for your games are designed to get you warmed up to game speed. Then once you've queued games, you can figure out which mechanics you actually have down and which ones you still need to work on or haven't yet translated to your online games. So stretch training is designed to come after your games and it can look like anything that is training a very specific mechanic you want to improve on. So look, it could be a training pack. It could be going back into Lathomir's Rings or one of the previous drills. It could be going into free play and training a specific type of shot. Whatever it is, stretch training is meant to train a specific mechanic that you don't yet know. And this is something that I see so many people get wrong, but it's way more important to hit on the fundamentals than to train something you don't yet know before the game. So for me right now, my stretch training is me just doing flip resets and ceiling shots and training the high level mechanics that I've neglected. But for you, it could mean any number of things. So I'll make sure to link my favorite workshop maps and my favorite training packs video on screen right now. So check that out if you're looking for ideas for stretch training. Most people don't have a problem figuring out fun stuff to do in stretch training. It's the other things that people like to skip. So make sure you hit on these first couple of drills, you cue games, and then you hop into stretch training. And trust me, you're gonna see improved way quicker if you go this way than if you didn't. So there you have it guys, that is the seven step training routine that if you can follow consistently is going to skyrocket your car control. But to recap and summarize everything we talked about, the first thing you're gonna do is hop into 20 minutes of Lethemir's rings or any rings map to get that aerial car control warmed up. Then five minutes of aim training by Coco to hit on shooting and consistency. Then step three, you're gonna run the hot potato drill to get used to cutting back and forth, setting up bounce dribbles, setting up carries, and getting that ground control ready to go. Then step four, five minutes of recovery training to make sure you are ready to recover and that your speed is up in game. And then the last step before you queue games, five minutes of speed training to ramp up your speed, to increase your reads and get ready to be in an in-game lobby. Then from there, you queue games. And for the last little bit of time that you're gonna be on, you can run stretch training for as long as you think you need to train a specific mechanic. So even if it's not perfect for you, hopefully that gives you a better sense of direction and gives you some ideas for how you can set up your routine in game. Definitely let me know if you have any substitutes or have any other ideas for how to improve this routine down in the comments below. Now, if you're looking for specific training feedback or you wanna be coached by me directly, my new live coaching program, The Grand Champ Roadmap, is currently accepting applications for our summer launch of the program. Just so you know, the spring launch was super competitive. We had almost 700 people send in applications. So if you want to get coached by me this summer, make sure to send in an application down in the Google form below as soon as possible to increase your chances of reaching the interview stage with me. Also, I know I mentioned the Fennec giveaway at the start of the video. So if you want to enter for a chance to win a free Fennec that's valued at almost a thousand credits, head over to the TikTok linked down in the description below to enter for a chance to win. But that's all I've got, so if you did enjoy, make sure to like, subscribe, do all the random YouTube stuff, and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers, guys.